Bonjour. <laughs> this is Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. And another Friday is upon us. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I think it will be Christmas. So, Bon Noel to everyone. And uh, today is uh, the Friday, the 16th of December. Uh, this is lesson number 39, and it's, it's 19, uh, 2022. So, continue with the, the you know, with, with the practice of, um, of French, encouraging people to practice the language, uh, and uh, also with, with Spanish. And you can see that um, I haven't made much progress uh, over the last few months in Spanish. I can read a little bit. I can sing it. My pronunciation probably is improving. But, you know, it's a long way to go before I master Spanish. And the same applies to any other language that you want to learn. Now, with French, we are in lesson 39, so we've covered some aspects of the grammar and uh, also uh, I've gone through... I've gone through uh, a bit of some reading from um, uh, Les Femmes Parlent Trop and Simone Fait Bonne Impression. I've done the Contes Sympathiques, uh, short stories, uh, Parlant Francais. In other words, you know, the, the four language skills are being tackled. The only one that I can't do with you is uh, the writing part. Now, the writing part is quite easy because you must start with um, very short sentences by learning the verb, uh, the tense of the verb, the present tense initially, and uh, you choose, uh, uh, you know, you, you choose uh, a topic like the body. You know, today I'm going to do the body. I've, I've got it here. Here we go. La santé is the... Uh, is health. Okay, and, uh, you know, this is my introductory uh, five minutes, so I'm not going to uh, actually start the lesson until then. So I want to say a few things. And uh, with Les Femmes Parlent Trop and Simone Fait Bonne Impression, I have actually read them uh, in the initial stages of this um, project. Languages and cultures, and for the moment it's French, Spanish, and I sort of introduced the Portuguese and a few other languages. But at the end of the day, you know, we learning another one is um, is a challenge, and learn, learning two or three at the same time is even a greater challenge, but not that daunting either. Uh, we're gonna <coughs> sneeze. Excuse me. Uh, it was cold. I took my jacket off. Anyway, never mind. So, the the, the one uh, the one activity that really gives me a lot of pleasure is actually the songs because I don't have to uh, I don't have to do much there except uh, you know go to YouTube and uh, pick up some song and then with Google you know you pick up the lyrics. And you start learning the song from uh, the masters themselves, the the singers. So that's that's a good activity for, because you can pick up uh, the vocabulary there. You can actually pick up short sentences that you can use in your with your writing. But above everything else, it's a commitment every day. Five minutes, ten minutes, uh, wouldn't be you know too hard to tackle in between activities of yours. Welcome to Curtis L. Tormund. Good for you to come on. Thank you. Then the Spanish, I'll, I'll do the, the, the Spanish in a similar way, uh, except again, you know, uh, it takes a while uh, to learn the words and to, to practice, but you need someone else to actually, you know, a Spanish speaker, if you can find one. And, you know, if you are friends with them, uh, you if you see them on a regular basis, it's a, a very big advantage to be able to check out your pronunciation uh, and uh, also to check, to check up whether you can maintain a simple conversation. Failing that, you can ask them to uh, listen to your reading, do 
you know, Simone fait bonne impression, and les femmes parlent trop, the, the play, and uh, les femmes parlent trop have nine scenes, there are nine scenes. Where Simone fait bonne impression, there are 12 scenes. So, the, the, you know, even one, one scene a week keeps you going for 21 weeks, which is quite substantial. Uh, what's missing from all this? The culture. In other words, the country where this language is spoken. So do we know, for example, in France, do we know the, the various provinces? Do we know the cities? Do we know the rivers, the lakes, the mountain chains? The difference between one area of France to the other, north, south, east and west. So that's uh, important. And the same with Spain, with Spanish. And then, of course, both France and Spain were colonial powers. So uh, France is spoken in, I know, I, I remember about 50 countries. And Sp Spain, I haven't looked it up, but, you know, a lot of South America speaks Spanish and some uh, in Africa. Maybe. Anyway, you know, all countries, there are Spanish people in, in the USA, in Australia, you know, the, the uh, immigrant countries. So that's basically it. So it's, what else can I do but start? Okay, so let's start with, um, uh, you know, with the grammar. This today is the formation of adverbs. Most adverbs are formed by adding M, E, N, T, munt, to the feminine form of the adjective, the feminine form of the adjective, not the masculine one, but the feminine form. Adverbs modify a verb, modify, the change, I walk slowly, I walk fast, uh, I eat quickly, you know, things like that. The, uh, the verb gets changed, uh, modified. An adjective or another, an adjective or another, so adverbs modify a verb, an adjective or another adverb, and they are invariable. Well, I did not the other one. I thought that well, they just uh, modified the verb. He said they can modify the adjective and another adverb, and are invariable. That one I knew. So let's have a look. Adjectives. Final. Feminine is final, early, finalement, finally, fort, fort, fortement. Parfait, parfait, parfaitement, perfectly. Extreme, extreme, extrêmement. Facile, facile, facilement. Rapide. Rapide, rapidement. Naturel, naturel, naturellement. Complet, complète, complètement. Amer, amer, amèrement. Heureux, heureusement. Heureux, heureusement. Happily. Sérieux, sérieux, sérieusement. Doux, douce, doucement. Attentif, attentif, attentivement. So attentif and attentive is a feminine. Attentivement. Franc, 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 franchement. Or is it franquement? Franc, franc, franchement. I think the CH is the sh sound, so it changes the sound as well there. Long, long, longement, at length. Okay, so you want to have a look at uh, this? Have a look at this. So what do you do? You get the masculine there. My phone is back. That's great. I wasn't getting any calls. And I don't know why, but I'll try it again afterwards. But well, it's good. Okay, Oop. sorry, come back to me. 
Oh dear, dear. Always something going wrong with this. Uh, well, it's the nature of the, of the game. Don't forget, though, that this is a, an educational exercise. So you don't expect me to be really precise about everything. It's, you know, it's, I do it with pleasure. And that's the attitude I'd like you to, you know, to have uh, when learning French or any other language. Because you can be very uptight, you know, and want to achieve so much. But really, it's, it's a long walk. It's not a short walk learning a language. Although, occasionally, you can get down and get down and do it fast and well, good. Like now, you know, what, the, what have we learned so far today? Well, we've learned that to form an adverb, what do you have to do? You have to change the, uh, the adjective into the feminine, the masculine adjective into the feminine, and then you, you add M-E-N-T, M. So, parfaitement, extrêmement, facilement, rapidement, etc. Okay, so that's so far. Now, the model is comment travaille-t-il? Huh? How does he work? Il travaille facilement, he works easily. Comment chante-t-elle? Chante-t-elle? Huh? Comment a-t-il prononcé? Comment étudie-t-elle? Comment danse-t-elle? Quand a-t-il compris? This is some of the exercises that they ask you. See, comment chante-t-elle? And the, the adjective there is do, D-O-U-X. So it's douce. Yeah? Elle chante doucement. Comment a-t-il prononcé? Parfait, parfait, parfait in the feminine. So you get, uh, il a prononcé parfaitement. Comment tu dit elle Sérieux. You gotta change that sérieux into sérieuse, sérieusement. Comment danse-t-elle Naturel, naturel, naturellement. So, elle danse naturellement. Comme, quand a-t-il compris Quand a Final, 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 finalement. So, il a compris finalement. Uh, and you put it after. Il a finalement compris. It's, you could also put it before. Il a finalement compris. Oh, he finally. Uh, now, I don't know. This is, you know, I'm sort of now playing with that language there and say, can you put it beforehand? Could you say, for example, uh, elle doucement chante. No, elle chante doucement. Il a prononcé parfaitement. Elle étudie euh, sérieusement. Comment danse euh, Elle danse naturellement. Elle naturellement doesn't go. It's after the verb. But quand a-t-il compris euh, il, a, il a compris euh, finalement. Il a but you could say, il a finalement compris, because that is a par perfect tense. So therefore, the avoir comes first. Il a compris. Okay? So you can put the adverb in between. Il a finalement compris. Il a compris finalement. You can say that as well. So depending on, on the actual exercise. Comment est-il parti, etc., etc. There are a few more. Comment agit-il Comment parle-t-il Comment répond-elle Comment écoute-t-il Again, as I say, if you come to me, welcome to Assunta Lombardi, and you come and get these books here, you'll be able to learn French very easily. I'll, I'll point it out to you. You're following, you, you're following these lessons here. Why not you know, enjoy learning French? And, and uh, you know, we'll make a lot of progress with French because, uh, you know, I'm even more committed to French and to Spanish than to Italian because with Italian I take it for granted. And so the, the, I do the English part as well. But if you, are, if you want to improve your English, this is the way to go as well.
again. This morning, a lady came in and said, uh, I arrived just as she arrived. said, I rang. I said, I didn't get your call. Then I checked out, and I'm not getting the calls from yesterday. Then I received a call just before. I don't understand what's going on. But I'll check it out with Telstra. We'll see what happens. Okay. Now, adverbs formed from adjectives ending in a vowel. Adverbs formed from adjectives ending in a vowel. So, if the adjective ends in a vowel already, is it feminine? Or is it masculine? So, if the adjective falls uh, in a vowel, then it, it uh, just adds M, E, and T. If the masculine adjective ends in a vowel other than mute E, a mute E, one that you don't pronounce, the ending M, E, and T is added to the masculine form of the adjective to form the adverb. But if there is a mute E, I'm assuming that then you, that, you know, th that particular adjective, you pronounce the feminine part. So in other words, the mute becomes feminine. The E becomes like the feminine of the adjective. Am I clear about that? For example, masculine adjectives, hardy, poly, vrai, absolu, resolu. Hardiment, poliment, vraiment, absolument, résolument. Gai, gaiement, gaiement. Exception is gaiement. I'll show them to you now. Okay, let's have a look. See that? Hardy, poli, vrai, absolu, résolu. Hardiment, poliment, vraiment. You have to remember those. It's a lot to remember. Ge, gaiement, or gaiement, like you change it to the feminine, like that. Okay, now, some adjectives end, ending in U. In the masculine, add a circumflex to the U when forming the adverb. Oh, that's an interesting one. Assidu, assidument, continue, continuement. Cru, crûment. So that's the one there. That's incredible. See? Assidu, assidument. Continuement, crûment. Attentively, continually, coarsely. Okay. And then they ask you to, uh, uh, to do some exercises here. Comment agit-il? Comment agit-elle? Comment chante-elle? Okay, and I'll do them for you here. I'll say, comment parle-t-il, parle-t-il, etc. So you say, il agit hardiment. Comment agit-elle? Elle agit résolument with the circumflex. Comment chante-t-elle? Elle, elle chante gaiement. Uh, gaiement, uh, which is... Uh, with uh, the, you know, the I, you, on the I, you put the circumflex accent and you get, you know, elle chante gaiement. Or you don't do that, it goes J-A-I-E, mon. Comment chante-t-elle? Okay. Comment parle-t-il? Il parle continuellement with the circumflex. Comment parle-t-il? Il parle crûment. It, 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 it speaks truly. Now, adverbs ending in E with, a, uh, with an accent, an acute accent, okay? Ad, ad, adverbs ending in, in dash E, M, E, N, T, okay? Some adjectives ending in a mute E change the E to E before adding meant to form the adverb. Oh, that's what it is. That's interesting. So, aveugle, uh, blindly, it says aveuglement, commode, commandement, commun, communement, confus, confusement, énorme, énormément, exquis, exquisement, 
importune, importunement, obscur, obscurement, opportune, opportune, opportunement, précis, précise, précisément, profonde, profonde, profondement, uniforme, uniforme, uniformement. Those were the ones. Here. See that? And then the feminine is like that. And then you add the M E N T. So again, you know, I'm not going to do the exercises. Uh, adverbs ending in A double M E N T and E M T. Uh, let me do those. Abondant. So adjectives ending in, in A N T and E N T in the masculine singular change to A N T or to a double M E N T and E N T to E M double M E N T to form adverbs. Just the, the explanation uh, gives me the headache. Here. Abondamment, brillamment, constamment, couramment, puissamment, décemment, évidemment, fréquentement, uh, patientement, patiemment, prudemment. And then there's lentement, présentement, vehementement, vehementement. Irregular verbs. Some adverbs have irregular stems. Bref, gentil, impuni. Bon, mauvais, meilleur, moindre, petit. Here, these are the ones. So these are the adverbs. Now, are you expected to remember all that? No, but you've seen them for the first time. Therefore, that's enough. Okay, so that was the irregular adverbs. Bref, brev, brevement. Gentille, gentille, gentiment. Impuni, impuniment. Impunement, impunement. Bon, bon, bien. Mauvais, mauvaise, mal. Meilleur, meilleur, mieux. Moindre, moindre, moins. Petit, petit, pas. So, so that's, when, uh, that, that's enough for today. Uh, when uh, we had the tests, you know, the tests, etc., you had to get this right. Otherwise, you get a bad mark. You didn't study. That's what studying is. But then, will you remember after you studied it? And after a year, would you remember that? You wouldn't, unless you read frequently and you speak the French correctly or, you know, frequently. So your, this grammar allows you to improve the French. Okay? Now, that was the grammatical part, which is the non, it's not really French. I stress this. This is not French. French is when you read this one here and you talk to each other and you don't worry about the, the grammar. You just go like this, scene two. Manon says, Bonjour, Esther. Que tu es gentille d'être venue. So gentille, we just mentioned before. Ma Esther, ma, bonjour, Manon. Bonjour, Georges. Comment ça va? Toujours plongé dans le travail. Oui, heureusement. J'ai juste une minute maintenant pour te dire au revoir et te souhaiter un bon voyage. Mais assieds-toi donc et dis-moi un peu ce que tu as fait ce, ce jour ici. Now, if you want to check it out, that you know it, uh, Manon says, good morning, Esther. Uh, how, how, how kind of you to, to have come. Gentil, you know, kind, gentle, gentil, you know, that's kind is the best word. Esther, bonjour, Manon. Uh, good day. Bonjour, George. Comment ça va? How are you? That's for both. To, oh, that, that's to George. How are you? Comment ça va? That's to you. Toujours plonger. Always dived into your work. Beautiful uh, little phrase. Toujours plongé dans le travail. 
That's, that's smart. Oui, heureusement. Yes, heureusement. That's the adverb. J'ai juste une minute maintenant pour te dire au revoir. Hein? I only get a minute maintenant to say to you goodbye and to wish you a good trip. Heureusement. Eh? Say that. There. Heureusement. We just done the adverb. And that's why, you know, when the grammar, you know the grammar, then you know how it works. How the language works. But, Really, it's better to just say bonjour, esta. Comment que tu es gentil? Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Tu es uh, toujours plongé uh, dans ton travail, uh, Monsieur George, uh, etc. All right. So th th these are these two booklets are very very important. Okay, and I wish that people did come here and get a couple of copies, just a few people to see that this work of mine actually produces some results in at least one person. Okay, now I'm going to do uh, the body. I'm going to say la santé, le visage, l'œil, les yeux. You know, tell me what, what I'm saying. La joue, le don, la don. Oh, I didn't know that don. In French, it's feminine. La dent, la langue, the tongue, la barbe, the beard, la gorge, the throat, la lèvre, the lip. Wow. La santé, huh? le visage is masculine, l'œil is, les yeux is plural. Le cou, the neck, le front, le regard, the look. Le pôle, le shoulder, la poitrine, le doigt, le poing, l'ongle, la cou, le coude, le coude, le cœur, le ventre, le genou, le sang, la peau, la, le rêve, la maladie, la fièvre, le médicament. La blessure. And that's that. For the parts of the body. For today. Alright, so that's how we go. And now, there's a lovely, uh, a, a lovely short story here from Conte Sympathique. Again, I have a lot of these books. And, you know, come and pick one up. Order it in. Follow the lessons per bene with the, the right, you know, information in front of you. Okay, qui va ton quoi? Don't you think that I now deserve a bit of uh, singing? Uh, singing for me now is... But I haven't done many other... I've been so busy, I haven't looked at other songs but the ones that I I want to learn these songs uh, per bene you know I, I really would like to here we are Snowfalls Tombe la neige tu ne viendras pas ce soir Tombe la neige et mon cœur s'habille de noir ce soyez cortège, tout en larmes blanches, l'oiseau sur la branche, pleure le sortilège, tu ne viendras pas ce soir, me crie mon désespoir, me tombe la neige, impassible manège. Tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, tout est blanc de désespoir, triste certitude. Le froid et l'absence, cet odieux silence, blanche solitude. Tu ne viendras pas ce soir. 
mes crimes de désespoir me tombe la neige, impassible manège. Me tombe la neige, impassible manège. Beautiful song, huh? And, uh, you know, do I remember it uh, now? Tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, et mon cœur s'habille de noir. Even just learning those four words, four lines, it requires effort. Tombe la neige, etc., etc. Okay. Qui va t'en croire? Who is going to um, believe you? Okay, well, I'll, I'm going to read it. I'm going to do it my other way, and I hope that I can read it easily. Here we are. So you've got the words in front of you as well. Qui va-t-on croire? Madame Gallimard allait souvent chez Madame Moron. Elle ne venait pas pour lui rendre visite, mais pour lui emprunter des choses. Elle empruntait une livre de farine, par exemple, une marmite de fer, une poêle de cuivre, des livres, des journaux, toutes ces choses à la fois. Monsieur Gallimard faisait de même. Lui, il empruntait des pelles des CO, des clous et des cannes à pêche. Le pire, c'est qu'il tardait à rendre ce qu'il avait pris. Par conséquent, les morons ne voulaient plus rien prêter à ses voisins. Seulement quand c'était absolument, absolument. Si notice they absolument in the book, they didn't put the circumflex on the you. We've learned that after absolute, you've got to put a circumflex on the you. Absolument nécessaire. Il le ferait de mauvaise volonté. Okay? Let's have a look. Un jour, un jour, Monsieur Gallimard est venu chez Monsieur Moron pour lui emprunter une hache. « Mon brave, a dit Monsieur Moron, tu as rompu ma meilleure hache d'acier que je t'avais prêtée hier. Si tu n'as pas de hache, prête-moi ta guitare alors, parce que je n'aurai rien à faire, a répondu Gallimard. » Je le regrette, mon cher, aujourd'hui, je vais m'amuser à jouer de la guitare. Ce n'est rien, a dit Gallimard. Puisque tu vas rester chez toi, tu peux me prêter, prêter ton cheval. J'irai acheter une autre hache au village et je te rendrai l'animal et la hache aussitôt que possible. Je regrette beaucoup. Mon cher, aujourd'hui, je vais m'amuser à jouer de la guitare. C'est rien à dire, Gallimard. Puisque tu vas rester, uh, he, he wants to, to borrow the, the horse. Je regrette beaucoup, je te prêterai le cheval avec plaisir, mais ma fille l'a déjà emmené au village où elle achète de, de ses traînes pour le jour de l'an. À ce moment, on a entendu venir le cheval. Monsieur Gallimard a dit, « Mon ami, je n'aime pas me plaindre. Il est difficile de croire que tu as menti. Mais il n'y a pas de doute que j'ai entendu venir ton cheval. » Monsieur Gallimard s'est exclamé, « Monsieur Moron, furieux, je suis un homme d'honneur. Réponds-moi, qui vas-tu croire, moi ou mon cheval <rire> ?» Who are you going to believe, me or my horse? The horse is not supposed to be there. Anyway, that's, that's a good one. Well, I actually understood that. They used to lend each other like, you know, good uh, neighbours do. Uh, things. But I, I actually, in my years, I actually asked one of my neighbours to lend me an axe. I didn't have one. And as soon as I hit uh, my piece of wood, 
the handle broke. So I had to go and buy a new handle and put in instead. <laughs> it cost me a lot more than uh, if I'd bought the, you know, if I'd bought the, the axe myself, would have been better. Well, that's it. That's, um, you know, that, that's, it's a good story. And then, of course, here we have the comprehension exercises. And I'm going to show you those, but I'm not going to do them. There they are. À répondre aux questions en une phrase complète. À répondre vrai, vrai ou faux. Et répondre aux questions oralement ou par écrit. So you have to answer the questions. You can say true or false. And you can either answer them orally or in writing. Okay, so that's a good exercise. They, these are good exercises. And uh, yeah, again, uh, as I say, you need the resources. Okay, so that's that. Um, well, it's 12 o'clock. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I was going to do uh, parlons, parlons français. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24, 25. So they are here. The numbers. These are the numbers here. And so these are the exercises, the times, etc. Again, as I said, you, you need, you know, uh, the age, etc. You need the resources in order to... And Antonio Danzi. Oh, well done. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for today in terms of um, the French. Uh, because, but I, I won't leave you without doing one of uh, Edith Piaf. Uh, no, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. No, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. C'est payé, balayé, oublié. Je me fous du passé. Avec mes souvenirs, j'ai allumé le feu. Mes chagrins, mes plaisirs, je n'ai plus besoin de balayer les amours. Avec leur tremolos, balayé pour toujours, je repars à zéro. No, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. No, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. Car ma vie, car mes joies, aujourd'hui, ça commence avec toi. My singing is improving. <laughs> oh, well, you know, when you do it, practice makes perfect, they say. So let's see whether now I can switch to Spanish. Cuando caliente el sol, aquí la piabla. Cuando caliente el sol, aquí en la playa. Siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí, es tu palpitar. Es tu cara, es tu pelo, son tus besos, me estremezco cuando calienta el sol. And you can look it up, huh? ¿Sí? Cuando calienta el sol, aquí en la playa, siendo tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí, es tu palpitar. Tu recuerdo, mi locura, mi delirio, mi estremezco, cuando calienta el sol. And now, 
Love me with all your heart, that's all I want, love. Love me with all your heart, or not at all. Just promise me this, that you give me all your kisses every summer, every winter, every fall. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol. There you are. Hey, that's uh, not bad. If you think about it, uh, you know, it's uh, it's Cuando Caliente del Sol, an historia de un amor, which I will try right at the end of this. But now, uh, El Apanador, which is like an umbrella. Apanador. Un apanador, una duena, una, un hidalgo. Una dueña, dueña. So I'm going to read this. Let's see if I can manage. Okay. Una pañador, una dueña, un hidalgo. That N with the apostrophe, with the sedilla on top is Ñ sound. Apañador, una dueña, un hidalgo. Estancia muy pobre. Si las desfondadas, desfondadas. Quadros negrus, negruscos y sin marco en las paradas, una cómoda ve, vieja, vieja. Puertes a, dere, a derecha e izquierda. La dueña senta da en una sílaba, sílaba baja, remienda una prenda de vestir. Va chalina negra. A la cabeza es muy anciana. Sobre su falda negra un, del, un delental gris o a cuadros azules. Cuando se oye el pregón del apañador, la viejita levanta la cabeza y parece, etc., etc., Wow. It's, a, you know, again, it's, it's a challenge. It is a challenge in Spanish. I had difficulties there because there were a lot of, um, you know, you have to pronounce it properly. You have to pronounce things properly. Now, let me see. From there, I just want to, I want to ask questions. Hay algún banco cerca donde se pueda cambiar dinero? Is there an exchange bureau near here? It says, hay algún banco cerca donde se pueda cambiar dinero? Do you cash travelers checks? Cambian check, checkers, checkers de viajero, viajero? Where can I cash travel check? Donde puede cambiar cheques de viajero? I want to change some English American. Quiero cambiar dinero inglés o americano. Americano. A cuánto está la libra? El dólar. How much do I get for a pound or a dollar? Can you give me some small change? Demo algo de dinero suelto, por favor. Sonia, please, firme aquí, por favor. Vaya al cajero. Cajero. Vaya al cajero. Because, of course, we know that the, the peseta, pesetas is the Spanish money, currency. So on arrival, you're at the customs. You are, you are at the aduana. Passport control, control the passport. Your passport, please. El pasaporte, por favor. Viajan juntos. Are you together? Viajan juntos. I am traveling alone. Viajo solo. Viajo con mi esposa, con mi amigo. So I'm traveling with my wife or my friend. I'm here on business, on holidays. Vengo de, negocio, de negocios de vacaciones. What is your address in Madrid? Qual est tu direction en Madrid? 
¿Cuánto tiempo va a estar usted aquí? ¿Eh? ¿Cuánto tiempo va a estar usted aquí? Beautiful. Tengo pesetas, libras, dólar, dólares. ¿Cuál es su equipaje? equipaje? ¿Tiene algo que declarar? Este es mi equipaje. Solo llevo mis, mis cosas personales. Abra la maleta, por favor. Open your, your bag. Can I shut my case now? ¿Puedo cerrar la maleta ya? May I go through? Puedo pasar y puedo irme. Where's the information bureau, please? ¿Dónde es la oficina de información? So that's, ¿dónde está la oficina de información? Mozo, este es mi equipaje. ¿Cuánto cuesta cada bulto? Yo elevo esto, eso no es mío. ¿Puedo llamarme un taxi cuando le debo? It's, uh, well, you know, uh, again, fries is Spanish. Uh, and then, of course, ¿Qué necesitas tu para, tu para ser feliz? What do you need to be happy? Let's, uh, let me see if I can read this and then I'll do the song. Here we are. Estela es mujer de negocios. Debo volar a México para comprar serapes y luego viajar a Miami para venderlos. Su avión aterriza en México. Estela camina por el aeropuerto y, y encuentra a su amigo Luis. Luis, mi amor, ¿cómo estás? Él lo abraza y lo besa en la boca. Wow. Vamos a cenar, bailar y cantar como siempre. Sí, querida, dice Luis. Vamos a tomar tequila y después a nadar el mar y caminar bajo lo, lo, las estrellas. Maravillo, maravilloso, grita Estela. Grita Estela. Necesito un hombre dinámico, ru, ruidoso y romántico para ser feliz. Tres días después, su avión aterriza en Miami a la sala de espera. Estela encuentra a John. John, querido, ¿cómo estás? Él lo abraza y lo basa en la mejilla. Vamos a tu casa. Uh, vamos a tu casa a cocinar, a hablar, a escuchar música y mirar una película como siempre. Sí, amor, dice, dice John. Vamos a preparar una pizza, to tomar cerveza y después a hablar sobre escritores cubanos y chilenos. Muy bien, dice, dice Estela. Necesito su nombre tranquilo, tranquilo, uh, calado y culto para ser feliz. Let's over here. Okay, and then you got the, uh, the words, sustantivos. Sustantivos. El aeropuerto, el avión, la boca, el escritor, la espera, la estrella, el mar, la mejilla, la mujer, the negocios, etc., etc. Okay, so that's that. Again, I, I can't, you know, in, I really would like to do this with a group of people who want to learn Spanish. And then I could do these classes online with you and uh, you can ask me questions and we can learn together. Then I'd be more committed to doing it. Okay, now this one here, this song, it's been a challenge for me, Historia de un Amor. I get it mostly right, but then I get to a stage where for some reason, I um, I just stuff it up because I read it, but okay, let's go. 
historia de un amor. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y eso ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Armando Petrucci, welcome. I didn't see you. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir. Adorarte para mí fue religión. En tus besos encontraba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le Dios luz a mi vida, apagándola después. Ay, qué vida tan obscura, si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y eso ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida. Ah, pagándola después, ay, qué vida tan obscura, si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y eso ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más, sufrir más, sufrir más. I hope that I don't make you suffer too much, but uh, this was a beautiful song. It is a beautiful song, honestly. And it's worthwhile reading it in Spanish, learning it, because you can do the Spanish, the French, the Italian. It's not bad, you know. I'm not going to do Portuguese today. Um, I have to. I have to go now. So thank you very much to those people who've come on. As the week to Christmas um, is coming, well, you know, we're almost there. Nine nine days to Christmas now. I want to wish you the very best of preparation for Christmas. And uh, on that day, enjoy it. I will see you again next Friday, of course. Uh, and uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a pleasure. It'll, especially because in languages and cultures, this will be lesson number 40 next week. Okay, so from me, Tom Padula of Tom Padula TV on YouTube and the Insegna Booksellers, adios. Ciao. Au revoir. <laughs> okay, here we go.